Hello, hello, welcome to the stream. Once again, one of the many fish in the sea, Nino Mayakare. And today, this is the second podcast of our series of VTuber podcasts and other related things. Today, we have two wonderful guests here. We have Komai and Serena Penguina. Oh, hello. Hello, uh, hello. Welcome to Wednesday Night Fights. Every oh, wait, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, welcome to Wednesday Night Fights. <laughs> 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 All right, so... um. Well, why don't you introduce yourselves? I guess we'll start with Konmai. Oh, <laughs> uh, hi. I'm Konmai. Uh, might have heard my terrible voice uh, on my on a terrible mic at NEC this weekend. Last weekend at uh, you know, yeah, at NEC. <laughs> why am I? Sorry, I, I I'm just gonna full disclaimer. I'm on two hours of sleep. I had to go drive somebody really early, and I get home from work at like three in the morning. So I had like yeah, I just I tried to power through it. I kind of didn't work out. Ended up just passing out. And uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's that's that's. I, I'm a commentator. I t I talk, but right now I you got me on my off hours. I haven't had any prep. <laughs> I just woke up. So <laughs> this what is, up? Yeah, this this is how you know that our podcasts are genuine. We get them straight up out of bed, and we go hard. <laughs> yeah, the VTubers came in like they 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 threatened me with a gun, and yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, over the virtual web. We're just like, yep, you're doing this now. Sorry. <laughs> it looks like you're being shot by someone. So I guess we're one that we're shooting you. <laughs> <laughs> All oh right. My God. Yeah, and Serena. Yeah. Well, what you been up to? What you doing? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> well, I'll, do, I'll do a proper intro. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Serena. For those that don't know me, I am a... Uh, a fighting game VTuber as well, like uh, Nino Mai. I do a lot of fighting games. I mi mostly play Melty Blood, Type Lumina right now. Also getting into Marvel vs. Capcom, number the second. Mm. And oh. uh, host in tournaments. Okay. All right. You're, what? You're, you're ready to do uh, Mother Blanking Infinite? Is that what you're telling me? I did. I did do the Infinite one time. Oh, Ooh, let's go. The in, the Iron Man one specifically. Yeah. Light punch, nah, you... medium punch, light kick, heavy punch, right? No, heavy kick, heavy punch? I forgot. I have to I have to go watch Akito's video on that. Light again. punch, medium punch, light kick, heavy punch. Oh, there yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta keep the rhythm up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And you gotta hold up, then diagonal, then up, then diagonal, then up. <laughs> My only favorite. in the corner. Yeah, only in the corner. Only in the corner. <laughs> God dang. You guys are nerds. <laughs> yeah, that's why we're fighting game players, apparently. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, so I guess like we want to get our we want to get to know our guests a little better, of course, because uh, some some of our viewers probably will not know who any of us are, which is usually the case when I stream, but that's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll, <laughs> so we, I just want to kind of know where like your fighting game like community background comes from and all that stuff just kind of have a basis of like what's going on and all that so uh yeah i'll just like start with the uh the interview i guess so uh yeah so i just want to know when both of you started fighting like playing uh fighting games and stuff <laughs> like when you got into it oh uh i've been playing fighting games forever actually um i think that my first memory of a fighting game uh, as far as i can like personally, remember it was obviously arcades. Like I got dragged to arcades. I, I, my my dad dropped me off at grandma's, and grandma was like, "Let's go to Little Tokyo." I'm like, "Okay, cool." So I, you know, I went to Little Tokyo. I played at like the Japan arcade a lot of times, not knowing any about anything about the significance or how cool it was at the time. And then the first like home game I played was actually my. Uh, I had a uh, what is it? A as if I'm having a hard time identifying what a neighbor is. A neighbor <laughs> that had had a troubled childhood, I guess, because I never got to see him much. But when I did, he had SF two, and I remember bodying him uh, very explicitly. I just remember like just mashing my face off because I I guess I understood how Chun worked. Air quotes <laughs> by mashing K, and I, he didn't like me that much afterwards. And uh, yeah, I I start I started playing a lot of them. Like I actually. I know a couple of really obscure games. I have played like Amiga fighting games. So like Body Blows, which is a really janky like 2D fighter that it operates off of like one button. Incredibly whack game, but also cool. It was tried to be like Street Fighter, but it was kind of before its time. Team 17 was making fighting games really early on. And then I played an a, a, a emulated version of Mortal Kombat of all things. It was like completely bizarre. But 
the beginning of the end was when I, I I remember getting sick, and my dad was like, "Okay, well, let's go to Blockbuster." You know, have you ever heard of Blockbuster? You know, like most of the audience was like, "Dude, this guy sounds like a freaking boomer," and you're not wrong. Anyway. And I was like, hey, this game looks cool. And it was freaking Soul Blade of all things, which is Soul Edge, but rebranded because Edge got like, uh, how, how to describe this? Uh, legal troubles. You, you couldn't <laughs> use the word Edge in a video game. So yeah, I played it. I was like, this game's like kind of dope. <laughs> and the music was like really sick. And yeah, I kind of just started playing Caliber pretty much almost as soon as I did a little bit of Street Fighter 4 when it first came out. I just realized I was a scrub and all that but yeah when sc6 came out uh yeah oh boy that, that kind of changed my life but uh yeah i've been playing funny since like i've been kicking in the womb so it's it's kind of weird <laughs> i can't even think of a time when i did it wasn't playing them mm. dang so you've been in it for a while <laughs> yeah not in any community though i didn't have any access to internet and all that so it's kind of funny how like you could well most people understand this like you don't really find out about fighting in communities i think that often until later on mm -hmm. i think because like who else would want to be that sweaty in a game <laughs> you know <laughs> oh boy <laughs> all right serena yeah, yeah. How, how long have you been playing fighting games for <laughs> Why don't time i'd say i like i've been playing i only got into the community much later but i've been playing since like i think the first one i played was street fighter 2 on the super nintendo the original hey. one, not even like super. So, oh. I I did that. I did Mortal Kombat as well, with with all its censored its censored glory. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, but, they had a yeah. censored option. Oh uh, no, no, no! I mean, like the Super Nintendo version was more censored than like all the other versions, right? Oh, uh, oh yeah, because family friendly fun. <laughs> yeah, I think it was at least. I I don't fully remember, but it 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 was, it, was, it was gory enough. Mm -hmm. Um, for the age at least. Um, yeah, like I just been playing tons of fighting games and never, never stopped playing. Like I, like every generation, there was like another one I would play. Marvel vs. Capcom Two is probably one of my favorites. Actually, that's when I got very excited. Got into Tekken Two, Soul Calibur as well. Soul Calibur, one of my favorites too. I got into. Um, and then, yeah, I uh, got into the community much later though, much, much later, and went competitive. Well, at that same time that I, I found out about the community, mm. which was like, uh, I really joined in like 20, when did, when did, like 2017, I think it's Hmm, 2017. Ooh, thank what you for the What game was that in 2017? Host, Jojo Eisen? BB Tag. BB Tag. BB Tag. Hey, listen, real, real homies play BB Tag. Don't let anybody tell you to otherwise. I feel I like that game. It's fun, and it got me into like my my tournament scene so i always appreciate that game mm. yeah yeah i i always like i actually am like haven't started playing fighting games until like 2017 <laughs> so like yeah just being around people who's been for so long it's just like oh wow that's so cool I mean, they've been playing for a while your fighting games is this yeah yeah I mean, like, ever since I got into fighting games, I was always like, this is the genre I'm going to be playing for the rest of my life, I think, because it's so fun. What, what, even when you're 90? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll back turn KF Fool at 90 years old. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> It'll just be delayed by, like, half a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> true, true. All right. Well, the next question I want to ask is, like, okay, so obviously you might, I, I mean, community figure as a entity is, like, subjective, right? But I honestly, I think... If you do stuff for the community and, and you get, even if you get like very little recognition or no recognition at all, I feel like you are a community figure. You're doing something for the community. So, Komai, uh, I, I don't think you think you are a community figure, but, figure, but I think you are. So, like, as a commentator and, and as a um, dank memer in the Caliber community, like, how, how did you, like, get that interest to become, like, a commentator or, like, someone who, like, gets really involved in the community? So I was one of those idiots, and I mean this very, very, very clearly. Don't don't get me don't get your, don't get me mixed about this one. I thought you could actually like make a career out of commentary. The fact of the matter is that's not really true. However, so I wanted to make I wanted I was I don't know I, I was I guess I was like I had some serial boredom and because I wasn't employed at the time 
when um, Soul Calibur Six got announced, which was like a year before, well, the game actually came out. And uh, yeah, I just went to Vi. I was like, "Yo, I heard that this game's coming out, and I want to do commentary for it." And he's like, "Oh, uh, uh, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> well, come on over. You know, like send me your resume, and you know, we see what we could do." I I didn't understand his like how reticent he was about it because basically he's never heard of any idiot who was that gung ho about a game before it came out. <laughs> like I think ever he even told me I think he's like you were like the first person to ever do this to be like that that into something before it even came out, especially with a game that has no community active at the moment because in the West Coast, Caliber had, was dead. Like uh. 6,000%. I know that the Caliber guys were there, and thank God, like, you know, we had everybody in place in SoCal to build a community that could be bigger than what it was, but it what didn't exist on any radar. Nobody knew who anybody was. It, it took me a very long time even to figure out what the history of the game was. And I guess by... The, the essence of what happens when you become a community figure is that you actually just end up having to research what the community is, and then at some point, people just start saying your name, kind of almost like it's, it's synonymous with the game in some shape or form. And in my case, it was just because it's like, well, you just go to this, you go to this stream to watch the West Coast beat the crap out of each other. And uh, yeah, that's kind of how it happened. Um, it, it was kind of hard work in the sense that I basically volunteered for free uh, for a year. Uh, but it was good because I don't think, I, don't, I think without that, I wouldn't really understand what it actually means to work in a fighting game community, which is like any other game, frankly. Uh, a lot of behind the smoke and mirrors of the glory of fighting games in general is actually just a bunch of people trying their damnness to validate their their time investment. And that seems kind of, you might that sound like that seems kind of, seem kind of sad, but like everything, every esport is like that. Uh, they Once they make it, yeah, sure, okay. They can finally, like, breathe a sigh of relief and say, ha, ah, I'm Riot Games. But mm. everybody else, StarCraft, any scene, any scene, literally every single fight, any scene that isn't like backed by insane amounts of gambling money is, has no like glorious beginning whatsoever. It's just, it's all just like scrappy, just doing stuff, showing up every week, being consistent long haul, not making any money, all this crazy stuff. It's just, that's the, re that is the harsh reality of it. Heck, I'm it's going to sound weird but like even Kumite is not run by like some sort of mega corp. It a lot of the structure for all of these fighting game events is these major like these big sponsors coming to these to people like us and being like hey can here's some here's some stuff like there's what we kind of want but like the rest is up to you. You kind of build it yourself and yeah, I learned that very quickly that no matter how grandiose I thought a game was, even Street Fighter is still held together by just like just like sheer force of will of the community rather than, oh, well, it exists because it's popular. It's like, you know, like how people like evaluate games on Twitter and stuff. It's nothing like that. Absolutely zero components function in a sense that like, oh, well, this game should be here because it's popular. It's like, no, this game is here because it seems alive. And that aliveness is, you have to gauge it very carefully by, frankly, you have to just look at your locals usually or mm. see who's popping up. But like, yeah, like he, what gets exposure on um, like Twitter and all that, like what gets traction is not actually indicative of game health. I think we've probably all seen that where it's like, man, all that negative stuff about a game usually gets like pushed as the forefront. But that's the, what's so crazy about it is like you have to kind of swim through all that BS and then find where the heart of the communities are. Like, like even what Mac Maximilian pushes, like that's very much a minority stance, right? Every fighting game is very dinky compared to every other game. So, long story short, I learned the yeah, I learned it through actually helping with anime. Uh, I, I was a kind of an understudy of a guy named RS who was keeping Guilty Gear alive at WNF specifically. It it was alive with Danger Time, so it had. Like, anime is really good at this. They actually have an idea of what structure is supposed to look like, and they just kept doing their own thing. And I was lucky enough to, through RS, just, like, one, realize how much I sucked at commentary. Two, 
got to play a game I thought I didn't really like, but realized that we all exist in the same space for a reason. It's because we can't really survive on our own. And three, I did get to hang out at Arc System Works and find out that even at Arc System Works, like, you know, the game that is that is published, Strive, right? Uh, same vibe, dude. Just like, it's not as many people as people think that are running the show when it comes to keeping stuff alive or keeping interest or even trying to engage their own fan base. Like, the Japanese developers do whatever they're doing, but the marketing components of this are like, yeah, anybody can really do it. And, I mean, not anybody, but like, it, you don't need that many resources to create something that makes you sort of like a community figure kind of thing. And yeah, so I became a community figure. Once I realized that I was just like, well, you know, I have this responsibility, I suppose, as being like one of the vanguards of the game air quote. And yeah, that's, it just kind of fell on my lap. I didn't really ironically push for it. It just, it, by being there, it just kind of happens. <laughs> it's inevitable. Mm. All right. Well, before we get on to the next guest, well, got to thank our followers, right? Jojo Eisen, Danny Rai, and Rexaurus. Thank you for the follow. And now, so as we move on towards, like, we have a niche community figure for Soul Calibur 6. And then, uh, Serena, you've been, like, pretty much doing a lot of games. Like, pretty much every single fighting game, almost. And, uh, yeah, how did, how did you get started on that? Uh, I, just, I, just, I just played a bunch of games and played the games I liked. I like started with I think when I first started streaming I started with like I think it was Soul Calibur Six it was actually the first game the first fighting game I put then like mixed in some BB tag and just I don't know I just I just eventually played all the other games and then eventually uh, I think I learned about the like the VFTC tag from like Chigzama hmm. I was like oh what's this what's what's this tag what's this what's this thing what's this VFTC and it was like all right VTuber fighting game community so. Uh, from there, I was like, yeah, this, this is cool. And then I came up with the idea of, let's uh, ask Chigzama. She had made a community, uh, community server yet? But, uh, no, not yet. So I was like, oh, I'll just do it myself. I'll, I'll make one then. I'll make one then. And then um, we did it. And then uh, after that, I was like, hmm, maybe we should organize some, like, some, like, Fun, fun night. So like, let every on like this day on on a Thursday or whatever, let I'll ask people if they want to join for this little little session for like BB tag or whatever. And eventually, uh, I was like, we've done a lot of these. Let's let's do a tournament now. And then ever since, no, not ever since then, but eventually, I started doing more and more tournaments. And now it's like pretty much weekly. Every week, I try to organize a tournament for our VTuber people. Sometimes mm. open as well. Although I haven't done an open one in a bit, but usually VTuber tournaments, just uh for people to have some you know some fun, some good fun stuff. So it just happened kind of by itself, you know. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, so far it's been it's been growing pretty fast recently. I'm just like, wow, so many people are entering. In and uh, I believe the most popular games right now, I guess on your stream are Multi Blood, obviously, as well as I believe Guilty Gear. Oh yes, yes. Hmm. In terms of the good tournaments, uh, Guilty Gear and Melty also get the most amount of people for like the the VTuber tournaments too. Right. It just it, just, it depends on the time and stuff. I think, I think the the hype has died down as much, mm -hmm. so it's not as many people unless unless you unless we do it like in advance or something. Because if you do it every week, it's not bound to have as many people as like say announcing in like a month in advance. Mm -hmm. That goes for any tournament really. Right. Yeah. Um. For sure, for sure. Now, do any of you have like future plans with like the uh, FGC community, uh, VTuber FGC and, v and normal? I guess I wouldn't say normal, but like offline, I guess offline FGC. Like, I guess future plans for those. Call my. I mean, I kind of already hit the. I already did the thing. <laughs> I say that jokingly. Uh, NEC was actually one of the biggest goals I had. Um, I actually. I used to really be like, ah, I want to do Evo, but uh, Evo honestly doesn't represent, I think, what the essence of the FGC is about anymore. Uh, mm -hmm. Not even be past acquisition, just in general. Like, even before the acquisition, it's just like a... I understand, like, the uh, trying to appeal to a base that is not your own game is important for the longevity of a game, but I really wanted to commentate the event that, in the Cal Cal Caliber's case, is like, this is Caliber's major that nobody knows about it, and 
it, but everybody who goes there knows about it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so I've already kind of like hit pretty much every milestone I kind of wanted to do. Uh, future plans wise, it's kind of up to like, I'm kind of, I don't even really know where the game's going and I might try to branch out, but the fact of the matter is that I don't really want to play another game as seriously as I did Caliber. <laughs> it just wasn't healthy. <laughs> It is, it's it's still not healthy. I'm still maintaining a, a a pretty insane like like in terms of mind share like what I'm doing every day. Uh, most of it's thinking about how I'm not blue god, and <laughs> the other parts are just like okay, well we're doing this weekly. It's like to the point where I just don't even know what life is like without it anymore. Mm. Um, but uh, I guess external to that, I'm still trying to figure out a secret magical way to universalize fighting game communities at round one locations. There is currently no plans for that whatsoever. It has been hinted at, but mm. nobody's been able to do it. And I, for, for frankly, for good reason, it's too, it's so hard to build a community in any space that doesn't have a bunch of like, frankly, super dedicated people and to coordinate anything at any large level and show that it makes money is kind of like the hardest thing because it's kind of like, in some ways, I, I, I can't imagine then signing off on, because I, I work for that company. I, I shouldn't be too, like, I'm not, I guess I'm not so that, but like, I don't think the social media is really looking out for stuff like that. But yeah, I've always been wanting to integrate the resources we currently have, at least in, at my work, to be a better gateway for people in the FGC to like, like just have had like something to go to once in a while. Like it, it's like a like borderline a monthly, probably a bi, ideally a tri monthly. But be able to like be like, hey, this is an arcade chain in the U.S. that actually has a vested interest in maintaining some semblance of what fighting games represent, which is like kind of like <laughs> right now the way that they sort of pitch is like it's sort of a cheap way to like really express yourself without having to commit to <laughs> the RNG components of games cuz yeah that's the that's where the real money's at wink no judge wink wink but um yeah i'm trying to yeah i'm trying to figure out that plan but that's like that's way off i guess the only other plan is really just demystifying caliber i think at this point i kind of understand what the game is about and how to communicate stuff that i wish i could have communicated like at the game's launch like for example, how to actually like why does why does small caliber beat reversal edge right like that that should have been said day one by the developers. They should have been much more clear about how to explain how that beats the mechanic, but they didn't, and it kind of sunk the game because it became a meme, right? And like at this point, we're just kind of left to the handful of people that are really dedicated to the game, and we're all struggling, right? <laughs> we, we're, it's expensive to go O2, <laughs> especially if you're a West Coast player, right? Oh, no. And I just want to find the way to, like, sort of solve that mystery. Luckily, uh, a super combo is really, the I think, the future of that, where everything is centralized. We'll be able to talk to other people, and we'll be able to test ideas about how to train people in a game that without necessarily, I guess, like... Instead of trying to find the audience, the audience sort of comes to you. That's why forums are really important, I think, in main maintaining them. Mm -hmm. um, like it, it allows you to have a like you don't have to like think of content and like answer it mm. like immediately by like being like really clout heavy or like find, finding some sort of strategy to market it. It's just like some dude comes to you is like, dude, I can't, I don't get this mechanic, and you're like, okay. Let me send it back to you. And, and instead of like in a Discord server where it disappears unless the admin sees it and pins it, it just stays there forever. But uh, yeah, it's, I guess like, yeah, just kind of normal maintenance because yeah, we grew up as a Discord game and kind of actually screwed us over. So I guess the future plan is just to stay invested, but to use more time efficient tools. <laughs> mm. Well, it seems Dan or I uh, does not agree with your assessment of RE. <laughs> That's fine. You don't hear people complain about it all the time. That's I still true. talk to people who are scrubs and, well, not scrubs. Uh, That's, see, that's my old FGC head coming out. Like, I hear people still complaining about it uh, that are not currently playing the game. Mm -hmm. And they found that that was the mechanic that stopped them. I, I get that it's not like 
game breaking, but I I guarantee the the feeling that the game was not being even able to was not capable of just like really telling them how to actually beat it internally without external help is one of the game's biggest problems. Caliber's biggest issue is is education internally. So like I just want to be able to figure out frankly is almost like a pitch to like Bamco but like hey Bamco next time you make a game <laughs> I will oh, <laughs> I like here's the package. It's like here's all the mechanics I like no, I don't know like I want to be able to like pitch to Bamco if they do do SC7 that s one of us or some of us can like actually build something that helps the game in the long term because man they they really screwed the pooch on having a game that teaches itself <laughs> it's not like an anime game like actually a good example of this is like like the reason why i think there's a little bit better retention in games like uh how should i say this uh, actually this is getting off topic long story short melty and Eunice had really good tutorials and caliber needs with those so bad oh my god and osaka was unfortunately not good enough for the job <laughs> so yeah well thank you for for your input and uh serena how about you any future plans for the vfgc or as a or just on yourself in general or anything like that in terms of vfgc stuff i just want to want to keep hosting more tournaments i don't know if there's anything like bigger i can do I don't know if I could organize like a big VTuber tournament. I don't think it'd be any different than just doing a normal one. So <laughs> I, I think it'd just be more <laughs> tournaments, essentially. Maybe maybe figure out how to space them better to give. I want to give. Uh, there's only so many. There's so many, so many like days, you know, so I can't host in. I can only host one tournament a week, really. Right. Like feasibly. And like there's so many other like smaller games I want to try to and let people try it like. I want to do a Marvelous and Capcom 2 tournament at some point. I really, really want to do one now. Either low tier or or all. I want to do one eventually. So, because I've been doing voting, pro for those that don't know, I've been doing voting processes for the VFGC stuff. People just, I just have people vote in the Discord what they want. But Marvel never wins, so I might force it <laughs> to win. Force it. You're the TO. <laughs> that is like, true. No, I am the for real. <laughs> they can go suck it. Do the, make it, they should do it themselves. I mean that very seriously. Like, you got to do the things that give you passion, and especially since, like, you know, you had like a burnout post. Like, I think like what a week, month ago. <laughs> like, you get, you get, you have the cards, man. You get to do where you want. That's right. true. So Soul Calibur one fighting tournament. That'd actually be sick. And for real, for real, that it actually works. So. Yeah, like it's oh, not. It's pretty. I need good. to test it. I need to test it. I might. <laughs> I, I'll. I'll put like a vote. I want to do it because I still want to allow the voting stuff too. So I want to I want to put like a retro game vote, like a fight cave game vote. And hopefully Marvel wins. If not, I'll force I'll I'll get another day and force it anyway. <laughs> yeah, just, just I feel I feel like, like in the in the last e or this year in 2021, uh, a certain fish has been making uh, interesting decisions for Soul Calibur tournaments. <laughs> I feel like. Uh oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> I, I feel like I I feel like we shouldn't have actually gotten two tournaments this year, but we did. <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, you 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 helped supply the stuff, so that is true. You pitched in. It's that's definitely more than a lot of other people have done. So that is true. Yeah. Well deserved. I'm like Soul Calibur Six tournament. Uh, Big Papa Chunk and I uh, use our servers. Uh, everything's TO'd by us, I guess. And uh, yeah, we'll just run it. <laughs> like if hey. you. I'm more than happy to help if, if I'm more than happy to help when, when you're, you're, you're that passionate about it anyway. And I love Soul Calibur, so I always love seeing it. So I, I, it w I, I was not forced to do these. I, I Wait. very much wanted to help. Wait, did, have the VTubers done a slip out tournament yet? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> no, I'm dead serious. Like if like, uh, uh, actually I will save that for a later point in the podcast because I think it kind of dovetails into some insights but yeah <laughs> that sounds that sounds hilarious <laughs> yes indeed so like as you see we're two out of three actually two and a half right komai does have a vtuber avatar that i used to yeah i mean I, it's still my youtube but i don't I, I am so bad at content i just don't do anything i still I just have the png <laughs> <laughs> it's primed and ready <laughs> oh i mean but you um, could just slap it as my active voice <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah so obviously uh because we're all here as vtubers or vtuber enthusiasts um just kind of want to 
kind of shill that in a way where it's like, oh yeah, why is this a good idea? And like, I feel like it's definitely such a niche part of the VTuber community that I feel like we it's like we should talk about it because like I feel like it's one of the most welcoming and like down to earth almost like for, oh yeah pretty much down to earth but like we're almost always like available always down to teach and all that kind of stuff so like yeah um i guess we could just talk about like how that online i guess experience is a uh, i guess is different from the traditional fgc ooh who goes first on this one um, i guess popcorn i guess <laughs> Rock all right, popcorn it? time. Yeah. All right, so I uh, let me let me let me get out the chart with all the the strings and stuff. You know, we're like I'm trying to figure out like how all the Nicolas Cage movies connect to each other, like in Community. Um, basically, VTubing fundamentally kind of stems from its larger cousin, right? Like the, the all the, the that VTubing in general is like okay. Where did I get this idea from? Well, I watched this cool, you know, like these YouTube videos or whatever about people basically having a lot of fun in games that I have, no, in some ways, I would have no business having fun watching, right? And it, it's a sort of an extension of streaming, except instead of looking at some person who looks bored out of their damn mind, like whether it's like your homie who, you know, it's just like a dude with a really grainy webcam or, you know, some e girl, I guess, whatever. Uh, you have an anime character, and I think the difference between somebody who is present without resting bitch face is actually kind of important because it already ev evokes kind of this feeling of like it's a little bit more fun and more whimsical and all that. And then on top of it, the expectation of VTubers is frankly just to be more having more a lot more fun. That just by the nature of how collaborative the space has already started out being, the difference between a VTuber and a normal streamer is like you can already you almost feel like you have permission to be more engaged with the vtuber than otherwise than a, than say like a normal streamer and especially in the fighting game space the fighting game space is cursed with this unfortunate truth that it, almost everybody feels like they're in competition with somebody else no matter what whether it's their own standards or their gameplay is just simply not interesting interesting enough to like maintain like attention for a long term so the reason why this is all important in the end of it all is that I think <laughs> it has finally lifted the, the, the veil of something that has been true about the FGC, in my opinion, for a long time, which is everybody in the scene is kind of fake in some shape or form. Now, granted, they're trying to push towards like their idealized self, like, OK, I'm going to be competitive in this game. I'm going to express myself in a game that's like, like cool, in my opinion. But that's not how I really am. Like, I am not that cool in the in like real life. Right. Like, I'm playing this fighting game to exert that will onto somebody so I can, like, you know, save your power somebody and laugh maniacally and have, like, some sort of reason to be that way, right? And ironically, I think VTubers tend to be a little bit more real <laughs> about, like, how important the community connections are versus, like, you know, some dude who's just, like, streaming the game, a game that whatever you like, and they're just, like, grinding on ranked, and you're just like, man, bruh. <laughs> it seems like... It seems pretty brutal. So I think just just by like like yeah, from the top down where it's like, okay, this it's it's cuter, it's more lighthearted, it's more focused towards other like just kind of like joining together and doing kind of off things. And it's not so much about like, oh, how does my gameplay look? How does this like like the, the focus I it's weird. It's like it's like on it's like on you as a character, but that character is gets to be selective as to what you want to highlight. And it just happens that most VTubers want to focus on like more communal efforts. And it's just like, why not? It's a very much why not thing because it really solves the issue of, frankly, fighting game loneliness. Uh, there's always like, yeah, we always periodically see people talk about like, man, I really wish I like, like more of my homies played this game or I, I had like more sets that were emotionally engaging. And sort of the brutal irony about that is that you actually acquire those by caring less <laughs> and just having fun. And I think VTubers really help push towards that direction where it's like, yeah, you can be like fighting to compete, but nobody's looking to be like, man, I got first at the VTuber tournament. I'm going to go like, 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 you know, flex on people about it. Right. It's more like, 
oh, cool, I got it first, you know? And all my friends were, like, cheering for me kind of vibe. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and I, I totally feel... I mean, until I play Shio Pawn, right? <laughs> and get absolutely bodied. But, uh... <laughs> I feel like, yeah, for sure, I feel like tournaments are definitely, like... Especially on the VTuber side, it's, like, so much more, like... We're just here to, like, you know show what we like learned instead of like i hate everyone and i'm gonna beat everyone up and like <laughs> which is sometimes i guess like i feel like the the fgc site like the especially like growing up when i first started is just like being trained by like the legendary man himself mick it's just like Oof. we gotta dunk everyone right but like now it's more <laughs> like yeah no I, i'd ra I, I just want to make sure everyone's growing and 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 like, yeah, I'll have fun BTKing people, but at the end of the day, I just want you to be able to like play around it, right? <laughs> Bully. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> Never mind. Forget what I said. It's all about the salt, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean that that is the advantage of like a community event is people people are generally like when everyone knows each other or or learn about each other, and it's like a kind of. Tight knit community people people be like less like oh I want to beat everyone and like destroy all you I hate y'all. Mm. Right, I remember when I first uh, joined a open lobby <laughs> on Serena's stream, but I was like it was really fun because everyone was so welcoming and stuff. Uh, even though I BTK'd everyone, but everyone had yeah. fun, so it was fine. <laughs> I, I think I was there for one of those, and I didn't like it. No. I, I, <laughs> I think this is one of the kind of interesting thing about this outcome is that uh, by its nature, right? We, we VTubers curate their existence. They, they they select what they look like. You know, they they select their personality. They try to stick to it as best as they can. And fall in and out of character, or whatever. But it, usually, like if you told me that, like, oh, VTubers are going to be X Y Z way. I would assume that they'd be like a little more self-centered to be like, like, oh, like, oh, it's about like my character, all this stuff. And it somehow the opposite has happened. And I think it's, thank goodness, it's because of like, you know, all the major companies and all that, as far as I can tell, they've all developed this foundation of if you're a VTuber, you're always hanging out with other VTubers. Like there's no like solo VTuber anymore. As far I can't even, I've never, I am, I, even when I scroll on YouTube, it's like, they're always collabing nonstop. And it was the best thing that could have happened because it helps resolve, I think, this. It, it has a very clear branding as to, okay, who, where am I going to go if I really feel like I, like, if I'm going to take a guess as to where I'm going to, like, end up in a place where I think that I could, it's okay to be, a, like, not very good at the game. It, right now, you could just be like, well, I'll just go join a VTuber, sh like, lobby, and I guarantee it just won't, it, you won't have to worry so much about, like, man, I'm not good enough, or, like, this, like, whoever is, like, there is just gonna be, like, S talk, like, shit talking me and stuff like that, because, like, I know, <laughs> like, I know that from experience, because when I, when I used to host lobbies, I was just a dick to everybody, because, you know, it's just how I was, and am, to this day. It's kind of part of the character, but, like, I think adding that secondary layer of, like, you know, almost, like, self-awareness in a sort of weird way, and the fact that, like, it's kind of mand mandatory that you are kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, creates a buffer that allows the, the FTC to flourish in a, uh, actually kind of an unsurprising manner. I'm not saying like, oh, yeah, everybody should be VFGC members. Like, not everybody needs to be a VTuber. In fact, that's sort of the great thing about it is that you don't actually have to be a VTuber. But it, it, it has made it very easy to identify where the chill lobbies are going to be, no, no matter what. And the best part about it, on top of that, is the people who are not necessarily VTubers. Good example of this is Forwind, right? I really had a different perception of Forwind. Even though I know the guy and I talk to him a lot of times, I had a much different perception of him before he was like interacting with VTubers. I think it was like Momo or something? Momo was almost, I think Zentrea as well. Yeah. And I, 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 I kind of got to know the more like playful fun side because i i know the the four one that busts his ass on playing a character that sucks right now and you know like, <laughs> like and has always been in the shadow of like not making like he's like respected by so many players as top player but he doesn't have like the the, the trophies that you know like solidify that 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 notion 
like and i i definitely definitely like share um uh, not empathy but like i i respect that big time it's not a negative emotion but that was where it was it was just limiting me to that spectrum of like competitor 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 but vtubers help bring out kind of like the showman in everybody he was doing like all the crazy like D D kind of like approach to things where you're just like you're not playing to win you're just playing to like to be expressive and and then acting expressive on the mic as well it, to kind of fit in with the rest of the you know you're just hanging out you're like you're just you're like you're like what is this what is his name michael jordan in like what is it space jam except you actually act the part <laughs> you know it, it, it changes you a little bit and it's good because uh whether we know it or not it's hard to necessarily show all the sort of facets of an individual if you're just focused on one side of the game which is like if you're playing to compete you're not gonna see that many people be like that whimsical right it doesn't make sense right so yeah it just kind of ended up that that this kind of like weird mixture of like oh this is a really like hard fighting game but these are really like fun people it make turned out to work out really well and it even surprised me for people i thought i allegedly knew for like you know i've known this guy for at least like a year or two so yeah mm. yeah you know i totally feel it's just like oh wow there's people who are like you know you really are like oh he's with vtuber that's crazy <laughs> right so do you have anything part, to add yeah i think i think part of it like is like because vtubers and streamers like they're very similar and like they can have similar energies too but i think part of it is that it's gotten a lot of people who would normally have never streamed to actually stream. So like there's, there's a, like myself as an example, I never would have streamed until I became a VTuber. And I know a ton of people that never streamed before until they became a VTuber as well. Or if they did, they like prepped a little before. It's like a lot of, a lot of people's first time VTubing. And that has led to a lot of people, but also a lot of people that want to like be be a chill person and whatnot and just have a fun time obviously there's like competitive people and non-competitive people but i think it's just in general we got a lot more people and uh vtubers for have this weird culture of they always want to <laughs> they always want to collaborate with another vtuber we talked about it there earlier but that is true i mean that <laughs> that it does allow a lot of like all skill level vtubing collaborations happen because I, I don't know I don't know about you I don't know about YouTube but have you seen as many normal streamers do like like it's not like a collab it's just I'm gonna play I'm gonna play with a friend kind of thing whereas VTubers kind of make like oh it's a spectacle let me I'm gonna VTube with I'm gonna collab with this person come here today yeah so like yeah I, I've seen that and I'll tell you what that's the sauce the thing about VTubers and uh like kind of like a meta perspective and not the Facebook meta like you know the sense of like we're we're all Twitch people is that that is the stuff that I was told to do years before VTubing was a thing. That this sort of level of marketing where you put effort into like saying, hey, we're doing something. Hey, we're doing all this. You're always like saying, like you, you are broadcasting and then adding a little bit of panache to it to almost everything that you're doing. It was like the, the sort of like the baseline to success. Not like, oh, this is the road to it. It's like, no, you don't even get anywhere without it. Uh, the fact that it is integrated into literally being an air quote VTuber is crazy good. This is like, I'm telling you, like, th this used to be like this. It's kind of funny because in some ways, you know, like, I think like what Pokimane's like building that streaming company or whatever to like help um, consult people how to like grow their stream. Uh, yeah. Dude, skip that. Uh, that's yeah okay i i mean i'm not as like an individual skip it just become a vtuber like vtubers have already figured out the literal pathway to success the consistency the branding the the idea that you cannot build it by yourself and you shouldn't and the kind of like the like yeah just having all these ch like checks and balances built in into your like even the way you express your identity just being like okay is this like part of my brand or like my, my character in this case like they seem kind of fake kind of things, but like they're not. They're the things that allow you to be consistent and build an image so that people can graft onto it as opposed to wanting, because like nobody wants to actually attach themselves to somebody that 
is like wildly unpredictable unless that person is unhealthy frankly like i i know like some of the my my fans are really just there for the meltdowns and that's cool but that's not sustainable right but all the other components of like vtubing the just the sheer transparency of like even your schedule right god i've seen so many streamers that have insane talent but they don't do those things and they just get they stay at that one to three mark forever like infinite right and nothing changes vtubers are like have the in if ah, sorry words they are already embedded in a structure that makes a lot of sense for online it's like it's almost like a cheat code to streaming if people were doing vtubing at the beginning of twitch uh it would be a lot more democratized i'll tell you that because most of the people that are struggling to get affiliate and all that stuff man <laughs> it's it's a lot it's a lot harder it was a lot harder back then because nobody really knew that the this what vtubers know now vtubers know almost everything that you need to know to like break past like the basic points getting partners obviously a different monster but fundamentally yeah it's all figured out and it's it's amazing like even if you ain't a vtuber uh watch how vtubers do things because that's how like if you're gonna be a content creator you kind of have to do the same thing except probably better because you have no branding you're just your face right <laughs> it's like eh. it's a lot of it's like the people you know too i mean like the v yeah the vtubing formula you got it, it is there but i know yeah there's a lot of vtubers because it's so saturated now because everyone's on the on it now it is now harder for vtubers to get affiliate that are starting to know unless they get that kind of like they already know someone or know people or they get that like kind of jump start and then they just get there and some people are just unlucky right yeah i mean i think some of that goes into like the the january february march like vtuber boom that we saw the pre-debut boom i feel like well that's going to be another episode but like definitely the oversaturation of vtubing like kind of hurt the community a little bit especially like vfgcs because it's already so niche but like i think now it's just like v you're, you're like as Komai said like yeah a lot of it is going to be like passive networking because like that formula is already set it's just like oh let's collab this day or open lobby this day or or um i don't know there's so many ways that vtubers try to like network and stuff and some of them are good some of them are questionable but work i guess but yeah like for sure like the fact that vtubing is such a like it's like solidified as its own thing um i think really will help especially like vtubers that play fighting games I mean, it's kind of only up from here. Uh, I, th I, say, I say this sort of like tongue in cheek, but I do think that like Mark Zuckerberg's monstrous creation is actually pushing us more towards avatar driven uh, identities in general, whether we like it or not. So, I, I mean, like you guys are already step back, even though it got saturated now, it, it, trust me, like somebody like me who is having a hard time figuring out whether or not I just want to like be like, Conway, or if I want to like even just make like a s secret side account and just be like an absolute degen all the time, um, it like I know that if I, I guess a good example of this is Garu, right? Garu is a close friend of mine and actually one of the original. Like, if you want to know OG Soul Calibur Six people, it's Garu and I. We were the first Americans to play that weren't impressed to play like Soul Calibur Six. Like that is Ooh. the lore. Uh, we played the the two character demo at at a at a trade show, just out of nowhere, right? And yeah, like you know, I was streaming from day one because like you know I wanted to build the game, right? I wanted to do the I did the things the old fashioned way. I'm like, hi, I'm 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 streaming this at a local, all this stuff. But you know, after well, after my internet got got bad and I didn't have a local anymore, you know, I just had, I got time to pay attention to what Gyar was doing and how much stuff that is memorable. Because even if, like, no matter what I do from this point onward, most of the stuff that I did at WNF is actually lost to history. You know, pardon the talky quote. It, part of it's my negligence. I just simply rely too much on Twitch to be a good curator of content. I, sh I should have uploaded to YouTube. But it really just comes out of the fact that there was really no advertising for what was actually going inside of it. Like, 
all this art or all that like but just like even having stuff that continues like i guess like the expression of being a vtuber like having fan art or and all that stuff like that is really important in the long run because at some point it, you don't you can't like actively get people to like engage with your stuff sometimes you have to have like some sort of weird passive means of accumulating people and the way that you do that is just by having stuff that has a lot of visual you know stuff att attached to it and that's going to supplement that supplements growth because all you just need to do is find a game or get like a gargantuan meme going on or something mm. and then suddenly like you're just diff you're ahead of the pack right or something like that and yeah i just i i just don't see anything bad about vtubing at all other than i guess you i guess you could wrong and run into the wrong person you could collab with somebody wrong but it's like that's so much better than the old way which is ironically not even that old it's like literally like three years old <laughs> <laughs> so yeah yeah definitely easier to to get like random collabs with people right yeah yeah, I did like a collab with someone in the Netherlands once. I was like, whoa. Whoa. That would have never happened if I was like still streaming under like with like a webcam and stuff. Yeah. No, for real, for real. Yeah, it's like also like it's like I think with VTubing, it's like because the concept of it is like eye popping. It's like this is a character and like it's a lot easier to get attention as well. And like, yeah, like it is unlucky if you're really struggling to get affiliate, but like Oh, I mean, it's just like, I feel like now it's just like, I guess the game is a little bit changed per se. And it's like, it, it's a lot of it changed. Yeah. Think of it this way. So uh, if you guys are stuck at affiliate, uh, do YouTube. Like you sh use your stream as a means to uh, get the content in terms of like, oh, the raw footage, like your B-roll, your, your main, your highlights and all that. But you carry it on YouTube. YouTube actually is the the hundred percent the best, and and TikTok actually. If you can do TikTok stuff, uh, that's actually the sauce because the you, the TikTok algorithm, for better or worse, is very aggressive at sending bots your way, and those bots send people your way at some point, and it's almost like the stuff's kind of evergreen because the content, you know, life life cycle is so short, right? You like. We're not the life cycle isn't short like it stays there forever but they consume it in a second right whereas youtube is even more long because they're usually trying to build like five to seven minute content or clips mm. and stuff like that and it yeah it's like the discoverability of that it's a little bit like long basically longer your stuff is the longer it takes to discover your stuff which is why static images are good right you consume that in a second and like then you go on like short videos and that that's actually probably like the highest like engagement and excitement that you can get for like a small amount of time and so like yeah that, that's why tiktok's good is because like yeah if you can integrate that into tuk tuk somehow it just it, somebody will just find you and yeah sure like nine like say like 99 out of 100 people will just like glaze over and not care but that one person well that's one third of your affiliate right <laughs> and you'll just get there eventually so i definitely advocate for like don't rely on twitch to do all your marketing for you it's pretty bad at it uh, this the interface is terrible and frankly you never know when the game you're playing isn't that cool at the moment or if it's just filled with people like the F like you know fgc is cool in the sense that they're loyal to the game but man you switch off of that game you're cooked <laughs> oh yeah you gotta find people that are more <laughs> sporadic and easily bored <laughs> yeah i, I stream yeah. yeah they do love their specific games <laughs> yeah that is true. which is I, I'm, I'm telling you, that's I'm the same way. You think I watch anybody? The only person I've ever, I think, stuck around for is Abyss Commando. But that's because I've bullied him into thinking that, like, I'm doing him a favor by just lurking in his <laughs> chat because I hit him with Savior's power, right? Like, there, there's, a, there's, like, an abusive relationship going on. There. That's why I'm sticking around. Poor Abyss. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, like, that, that's my little... But if like you know if 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 growth is your thing but that being said ugh, like trust me i think i i didn't really care about growth i cared about the love and adoration of people that didn't like me to begin with <laughs> which was equally as toxic so <laughs> all right borderline stockholm syndrome well i think that yeah. is a good segue into like i guess like what are some struggles with like vtuber fgc like especially we're, we're i guess like we have a lot of members but i feel like in the grand scheme of things it's very i feel like it's very hard to like branch out and like 
kind of like get other VTubers or other like individuals that are not VTubers into fighting games. Because I feel like to me, the ultimate goal for like as a streamer for me is like I want to get people in the Soul Calibur 6. Game's great. Game's great. So um, I, I want to make sure that like everyone else like wants like plays this amazing game because I don't know. Keelix Baxter and K is amazing, right? So like, <laughs> <laughs> so like, I don't know what what I feel like. There are definitely like certain I don't, I don't want to say drawbacks, but certain struggles that the VFGC might have currently. And I was just wondering, like, from you two, like, what might that be in your opinion? Uh, take it away, Serena. I <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Well, okay. Uh, in terms of uh, and just to to go on your point, uh, Kare, about getting people into Soul Carver Six, I think for that particular problem, I think that's just a thing that is general to anyone, VTuber or non VTuber, in trying to get someone to play something. It's uh the lack of support or a player base. People got intimidated. It's like, oh, there's no one else playing. That's that's always the main. That's always like the biggest thing. It's like there's no one playing. I don't want to use Discord kind of thing. That's just that's a general. That's a general issue of getting someone to play a game. Mm -hmm. The the easiest. I mean, the best. The best way that usually happens is someone big does it, and someone big is like. I think there's like a Marvel 2 resurgence because a lot of like the rollback and then a lot of the content creators like Justin Wong is doing a lot of stuff. And stuff mm -hmm. Maximilian. And yeah. Everyone's getting back. It's like a combination. It's like a cycle of rollback, uh, big figureheads start playing the game again. People start start watching again. And then now Marvel 2 starting to get like a little, a little bit of a mini resurgence kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So and maybe if we get rollback or Soul Cover 6 and it cycles. Then it might work, but yeah, right. mm. not holding my breath on that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> apparently rollback on 3D games is like not fun to code, but I wouldn't know. <laughs> but so uh, actually, I think I probably understand. There's more. There's more that can go wrong because there's so many. It's a little more complex. Mm. I think I do have sort of an insight as to why that getting people into the game is hard, especially for a VTuber. So, uh, the the fighting games are kind of fundamentally built to be borderline romantic in terms of how you engage another person into the game. And most of the stories that even like in sort of like fictitious senses about like fighting game, getting somebody into a fighting game usually involves like being a tutor. And then the, there's obviously a student. And that relationship is hard to maintain if you were a streamer, because guess what? You got all these other people that you need to take care of, or more specifically, it's just expected to, of you to take care of them, regardless of whether or not you're like, yeah, but this homie really wants to get in the game. And I know that there's no way in hell they're going to find a match at like four in the morning or whatever, just whatever ex excuse, or like say like they want to play this character, but they're afraid to like go out into ranked because they don't want to run into like... <sighs> Well, they don't want to run into a, sp a certain person that has a core values, uh, cast, and all that fun stuff, right? Don't know who you're they talking about. They want to, like, yeah, I don't know. That person's a scourge on the community. I don't know who the hell they are. <laughs> yeah, but, me um, neither. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, like, you have to, like, really tutor them, right? But you don't get the, like, if, if you're streaming, you have to commit to so much more than just bringing up one person. Although you could turn that into content, frankly, and that, that's actually something I wish people would do is just like, hey, I took this person as a student, watch my journey, and then you edit it down to where it's like, you basically turn it into a, like a sports anime, right? Where it's like, oh, Senpai noticed me. Oh, Senpai is beating my ass. And then suddenly I'm beating Senpai's ass. Oh my God, right? And- It just sound oddly, oddly sexual. Hey, listen. Uh, whatever, whatever works, dude. Project Melody. God bless. <laughs> There's like an added panting sound too. <laughs> what? I'm not. A, I'm not. A, Red Bull ain't sponsoring this. I'm good. That's true. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like I, 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 I probably use the hentai part of it, the, the, and per, on purpose just to get your wakey guys up. But yeah, like that's the structure of how you really engage somebody into a game, like with with any semblance of success. Just saying, hey, go play this game doesn't work. And we all know that. And so, mm -hmm. like you said, it's a universal problem. But I think it's doubly a problem because 
if you are committing to the VTuber life, it is very much about sharing the love rather than focusing it on into an individual. And that is, I think, unfortunately, something that all of us are going to have to realize is that if we're going to build the game, you kind of have to do it one person at a time. And at some point, they'll want to like leave the nest and want to explore other avenues, whether it's through the fact that they're just bored with your bad teaching style. Like, say, like this person says BTK is the best and you should always go for that setup. And they just want to be like, but I want to learn like real neutral. I want to be like Party Wolf. And you're like, no, get the <laughs> hell out of here. Right? Oh, no. <laughs> and yeah, or if it's just like they outgrow you, right? That's mm -hmm. when, yeah, you can let them free and then they already know where the wikis are. Or they join the secret discords or they, you know, somehow stumbled to the future where the updated version of the super combos sc6 wiki actually tells you how to play the game kind of thing right it, those are things that are kind of like works in progress but yeah like that that's you're not expecting like it's it's funny how backwards a lot of fighting game players tend to like look at things because um myself included i know i try to teach people with the like hey here's the resources call it a day you know you know give me give me that follow right but the answer is actually you no know, you really have to sit down and I perhaps more so the hardest thing to do to really get people to stay in the game um, is oftentimes not going to be the people that you actually pick. And by that, I mean, uh, I played Tekken for a lot longer than I thought I would because I ran into two people that happened to be in LA and both of them happened to go to WNF, but both of them literally added to me and said like just genuinely nice things. And as a caliber player, I know I cannot do that. Oh my God, I have run into players who I just do not respect and I don't think I like. And I miss op many opportunities to probably like grow the scene just by virtue of just being salty to not do the right thing. And yeah, those might be the only people that are actually open and, re open and receptive to becoming a part of your community or part of any game's community are the people that you just like sometimes trash or they trash you or it's kind of close, but you the lag stopped you from breaking the throw you know all that stuff and those are the that's that's where it's at that's actually like those are the moments of truth i i really do believe that because like i just like when i look at tekken outside the only thing that gets me to think that tekken as big as it is is really it's it's not because of the game and i know that tekken's great and i'm not saying like oh tekken's a bad game but like it, as far as somebody who like looks at the game and goes like oh i want to experience that after like a certain point it's like no it's not that it's clearly something else it's clearly the community building it's clearly the culture of like wanting to get people to engage in the game more it's not oh it's flashy oh Har harada is my abusive father that i never had you know all these other kind of like fringe things that we think it is it's probably just comes down to good old good old fashioned like this is like just giving people like being open enough to get people the attention where they need it at the right time and that's oftentimes in the middle when they're just like man i'm just playing this set i'm grinding it out and i'm like can't get past this rank barrier and then somebody like you know has a personal moment and it was like yo <laughs> like that was like you know I, like, because the game say clearly didn't communicate it well enough and i actually that's that's really the problem is that even though like we the promise of fighting games right the promise of fighting games has always been you get to be very expressive very open very almost clear with your intentions and how you are doing things but somehow it's still not good enough it you, we're still always missing these small things like man how, how can i show that this person that i respect them or i respect their play or i'm impressed by their play you know how do how do i even convey that you can't convey that in the, the game because you don't stop playing right like you're not like oh man i well i guess yoshimitsu mains can do it so that's why the, the best character that, that's the best main in the game but like you know what i mean like it's just there, there are things that need to be said that require you to jump through a couple of extra hoops. And that's why we're having all this fall off, right? It's not like, oh man, these games are trash. Like, I know we meme about it, but it really comes down to just like, you have to do a lot more to really build that long-term relationship with the game. Hmm. Yeah, I feel, I f yeah, I feel like, yeah, especially for Soul Calibur 6, it's like, there's a lot of like, I guess like unearthed drama that like continues and all that stuff, but I feel like a new person isn't gonna know that. So I feel like 
If I can, if I can nab him in, we'll, we got him. We got him. <laughs> I'm just waiting for Son Laughter, Son Laughter to become a VTuber, and then I will have to like eat crow. <laughs> mm. just be like acquiesce that they are cool actually that's actually kind of not even a meme i've been noticing that a lot of my friends it's a small world soul Calibur is a very small world and a lot of people that i didn't think were very community driven actually are very much so and i have to really i have to really give credit where credit is due like i have a friend who's an asshole man he plays from mexico and uh we both just like meme on each other nonstop. And he's kind of like feeling down about the game. And the first person who kind of comes to his aid is a guy who I thought was a ranked troll. But it turns out he just had a bad laptop. <laughs> it was just like, I wouldn't have never known. Like, <laughs> that's the kind of weird thing about like every fighting game is that you don't actually know who you're fighting. Uh, especially online. Uh, until you really kind of have to like make yourself vulnerable by opening yourself up a little bit. Like sometimes you have to let go of the G button. And... I think that's one of the difficulties with the online FGC as it currently stands is that we have a lot of very clear images of what a person should look like online. Uh, scrub quotes is probably the biggest to blame for this one. Not that it isn't funny content, but I think it has poisoned the well a little bit as far as like how I definitely perceive like some rando who lose quits on me, right? It, it, they might not be mad that mad. They might just actually be going back to the lab just because, like, I hit them with, like, six trillion lows and they all looked unsafe, but they're not sure which one it is, right? Or they had to go, right? You know, you never really know. And while, yeah, it's, we could be certain 99% of the time, we are looking for the fringe, right? We're looking for the person that we're going to build a relationship with in a fighting game. Those are always the outliers. They're never the majority, because we, we know from fighting game sales, right? Like, game sells like s a billion copies. Game's still going to be a Discord fighter in like three years, right? Doesn't matter what it is. So, yeah, it's, we almost have to have that kind of crazy awareness as to how, like, we have to be kind of careful about it. If, if your objective is to grow the scene, which is like, that's the hardest part. It's like, sometimes you just want to be a normal dude or normal person or a normal penguin or a normal fish. And you don't want to have to have the, the duty of like, ah, oh man, okay. Yeah, put my ego away and do the right thing. It's like, that's, it's so hard. I don't do it. That's why I don't play that much. And that's also why I don't stream the game anymore. It's because I can't juggle being a community good person and being a good steward of the game and playing in my crappy connection at the same time. It's just not possible. <laughs> I, think, I think a lot of the offline stuff definitely helps because you get to talk to the person. Like, hello! Hello, maybe, maybe, depending on the person you play, I use, personally speaking, when I played offline, I always laughed with the person I'm fighting, and generally speaking, all the people in my community have been, like, very laughing, too, or just having fun and whatnot. Mm. So, like, yeah, you get to know the people better. Like, obviously, you'll never know the person online unless somehow they message you, and online messages can get lost in translation, as we oh, all yeah. know. Oh, yeah. Right. Like, I don't know, GG's. <laughs> have you ever heard GG's. ggs before and you're like i don't feel what <laughs> i didn't feel the ggs buddy gg stands for get good yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get good <laughs> get goods plural yeah yeah <laughs> get goods. yeah i guess that like that transitions into like we have like especially like the old fgc like model where we're like you only get respect if you're good and like what what happened like i guess like when that translates into and then like let's say they become like a vtuber like i guess like i'm an example of that because like i actually like so was streaming caliber since day one as well and like that's how i like got better at the game i was just like trying to like grind the game get hella good and then like obviously i'm just gonna start trash talking people right and like i guess like i learned really quickly and quickly enough so i didn't get in trouble <laughs> but mm -hmm. i feel like what how like for the, I guess, the iconic things about the FGC, like, like I guess, like, trash talking or, like, like money matches and, like, challenging or, like, beef and stuff, how does that, like, I don't think that translates that well into the uh, VFGC model. Like, how, how would you, I guess, like, is that, like, just a thing of the past or how is that a thing that's even, like, I guess, moldable into the current VFGC model or how, how, how would you, I guess, navigate around that? I think, like, in terms of the trash talk stuff, like, 
I don't think you see as many people do that because a lot of the VTuber stuff is like, I don't know, there's a lot, there's a lot of drama people, there's a lot of drama stuff in VTuber stuff like that so you might not see and a lot of people get mad really easily so unless the track talk is in good fun you i don't think you'll see that as much i think a lot of the people that are like vtubers and playing fighting games are generally most of them because there are some like pro level players that are there so like but the common the common person that is quote unquote vfgc in, in our case it just means someone that's also playing fighting games and is a vtuber they're generally probably not that high a level they're probably more they're most likely more like average level they just love fighting games and they want to play it so like they are more in line with our average user mm -hmm. of, of a play style in terms of expertise that is unless like you have your you have your your remolas and whatnot but they're very very rare in comparison right yeah so. i just like it's like for me personally, it's like I gotta tread these waters if I'm in an open lobby with other VTubers. Like I say something like a little, I was like a little bit dumb, and it's like, oh no, I'm in trouble. <laughs> like now seven people hate me, right? So like, <laughs> so you say one wrong thing, yeah, and you're, you're sent to the phantom zone. Pretty much, like like I think, uh, I guess like my first impression of like the VFGC is like before like I realized like oh it's not even like. It's not even like supposed to be like that. It's like, oh, it's like a minefield. I like say something dumb while I'm playing Caliber and I BTK someone. And then boom, I'm like, oh, he's a villain. He's like automatically a legitimate villain. Like, like, yeah, people call me a villain, whatever. But like, like a, being a legitimate villain is like completely different. Right. So it's like, I think like just being able to determine that, I guess, line and to, and to not cross it, I think is important. So it's just yeah. like trying to get that insight from from I guess you and Komai. If... Friend friendly trash talk. As long as they know like it's friendly, like it's not like like you you just say say like oh what a silly Billy you're such a noob kind of thing or I don't know. It's, as long as you say it in like a nice way, <laughs> like I, I think that that context might have been bad still. But like you know you know what I mean, right? Yeah, you you know what I mean. Hmm. A friendly trash talk. No, like oh this guy actually sucks. You shouldn't be in my lobby. Like that's that is that is not. That is not nice. Yeah. I mean, that's scrub talk no matter what. I think... I, so here's the problem. How would an anime character say it? And then further distill it down, how would an anime character written by an American writer say it? And there, that's what the <laughs> curse is, because I think this is uncharted water. Because I definitely, when I'm watching this kind of stuff, I, I definitely keep thinking to the back of my head, I really do wish that they that VTubers in general were a lot more raw just because it's a lot more funny to see a character that is sweet on the exterior, but inside beats the heart of a freaking demon. Like that stuff makes me laugh like crazy. And I think it's entertaining, but because it is like uh, VTubing is sort of an extension of part of it is masking the vulnerabilities of like the self, which is a, a curse that we're all very well aware of as anybody on the internet. And you have to be really sensitive to that. Not well, not really. It, it, the fact of the matter is, like, <laughs> clout actually has an exchange rate, right? And you can get like bodied by people just talking bad about you. Um, I, I think, yeah, that is where it is. Like, that's where the V tubing's kind of space is in trouble. But that being said, uh, coming from a game that is sort of like semi soft at this point, yeah, uh, that is a problem every game is having right now we are in the the future universe where you either buy into the bit super hard or you kind of keep your mouth shut because you never know who's going to take it out of context and then like talk about it in a discord for ad nauseum right like that, that's just like the inevitability of us not being centralized as much anymore so while we do have a lot of like i think it how should i say this this the way that vtubers behave uh, is very beneficial for people that are trying to find a, a means of entry into the fighting game space. But in terms of long-term maintenance, when everybody eventually turns into the monster that they wish they weren't, uh, which is every fighting game player, uh, we are all, all scrubs in that regard, uh, whew, it, it's, that's a water that is incredibly difficult to navigate because, yeah, there isn't... That part isn't that fun when you realize that person's either serious or you said something that seriously hurt somebody either like either way it, it's kind of like 
I don't really know what they're that, that's a lot uh, frankly bigger than a podcast but I do think that authenticity is necessary and inevitable and yeah I I, I like uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm not a VTuber is because like, I know I'm going to say some stuff that's just rotten because <laughs> that's just how I am I but I drown in pools so like I sort of it, it sort of like balances itself out like I'm known as a character that literally like just like talks a lot of shit but also dies <laughs> <laughs> So it's it's not that problematic in the scope of things, but I would I would imagine it would get much more complicated if you were like a community leader leader, like in the very like, oh man, people like me for my gameplay. And then you say something mad toxic in the VFTC space, I could I could imagine that have dangerous repercussions. But I, I I don't know, maybe we can live in a society where there isn't that much trash talk in general. That doesn't mean the doesn't mean to be the core motivator. Um but then again, VTubers are good at making media, and you can kind of mutate beef into like events and stuff. Like that's what Thundercourt's all about, as far as the Soul Calibur context is concerned. We just, whenever somebody starts beefing, we just bring it, like we make it vague and we bring it to light, and uh, we all watch because we're like, we don't even know what the beef is, but we're just here to see it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, like people, people do have those parts of their like quote unquote character that they'll just add in. It's like they'll get like super, super, super crazy when it like when they're in a fighting game or something crazy is happening. So they'll like they'll they'll they'll, they'll swear a lot, they'll talk smack a bit, but like it's like kind of part of like that. That's the excitement. Like like you said before, that's like the excitement you get from like seeing that contrast in that person's character. Mm -hmm. That can be like VTuber or non VTuber, but VTuber especially can get pretty crazy. I right. think part of it might be just <laughs> sometimes your content might have to centralize around the personal growth aspect of that. Cause I think this, the, the story of the whole, like, I, I think of like this fictional anime of fighting game stuff, and it really does come down to the fact that, like, uh, well, not fictional. Actually, a good example of this is High School Girl. High Score Girl. I, can't, I always say High School. <laughs> high School Girl. <laughs> high Score Girl. Yeah, I know. The High School Girl is every anime ever, bro. Like, what yeah. the heck? <laughs> but, yeah. High Score Girl is very much about, like, your average dude who just, like, is a scrub at, kind of a, he's, like, not a scrub. He's, like, he bodies, like, casuals, but he's actually a scrub kind of vibe. Um, And that's, just, like, his arc is just him getting beat up and being wrong a lot and then finding ways to be right and i feel like that might it, it maybe it's just coming down to normalizing that particular arc as a means of like conveying your long-term content like in not long-term like the curated stuff like in youtube and whatnot that might be the change that be that will have to happen because yeah right now as a term as it stands like there's no positive feedback loop for being like salty and then having your peers being like grumble grumble this 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 fish guy's bullying me man you know all that stuff um but maybe there's an angle where you can actually turn it into some sort of meaningful storyline and because if you're an online person you have control over what narratives kind of like produce out of you especially when you're obscure uh yeah some people will say like oh like you you like you you sort of sleep in the bed that you make but if you make it really obvious that you're like sort of being repentant about it and make that part of like the way that you express yourself, somebody will find it and they'll be like, wow, what the heck? <laughs> I, I think that's, that's, that would, would, that would be the thing that changes the, the trash talk problem air quote mm. is just, yeah, turn it into something cool. Um, because it, it can be done and maybe that's, that's the weird way to collab. It's like, they might say like, oh, I don't want to collab with you. And it's like, okay, that's fine. But if you try to like show ways that you're growing, because I know we do that in a micro sense a lot. And I think it's the hardest part about like FTC people is not people like myself included. Uh, it, it's, it's hard to be like, man, yeah, I really blew it when I said something really bad to like, and they, cause we don't know what the effect was, right? I don't know that this person quit the game. Like good example, there was an IV dude, IV cast that was like playing 15 frames per second. And I air suicided that guy like three times and like yelled at him on a stream. I don't know where that, I don't know where that person is ever. I never saw them again. That might have not been the outlook I've been looking for. I should have just quit and walked away instead of like, you know, trying to celebrate that. 
I took somebody who was barely playing the video game <laughs> and dumped and dunked on them, right? Uh, and it probably would have been better if, like, I, I don't know, ran into them and was repentant about it. But I, I don't know. I just keep thinking that there's, like, because you aren't, like, VTubers and people, actually anybody who's a content creator, are not necessarily fixed beings, but you can really... Like, if you really want to, like, showcase the vulnerability of yourself, it's doable, and it's not out of character. Especially with, like, VTubers being anime-centric. Like, anime is about pain, right? It's about, like... It's, like, e even, like, the cute stuff, it's about avoiding pain. <laughs> like, you watch Eurocamp. Why? Because you're tired of feeling the hurt inside your soul. You just want to have, like, cute campy stuff. You want to have something to spend money on. <laughs> but... Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's that's just my speculation. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think like, yeah, I feel yeah. Just because like, I don't know. Personally, is like, like I said before, it's just like being kind of growing up. Like before before Caliber, I, I played melee for three years, uh, competitively. So like, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of trash talk. It's very grassroots. It's very community driven. Uh. I, I'm I'm not afraid to call out campy foxes. Like I will make their day feel really bad. Like because <laughs> I play puff, they're just gonna laser cam me. It's like okay, all right. I was like, how's your tent over there? You're gonna approach me one day? Like you, you're like all that <laughs> stuff, right? Like so, like going into caliber is like, oh man, when I like friend play Ivy, I'd be like, oh okay, cool. Like I'll, I'll find out ways to trash talk Ivy players. <laughs> like like that's how I grew like grew up as a player. It's like okay, I'm a Keelik player. I hate Ivy. I hate Cervantes. I'm gonna like, like make them feel bad when I beat them <laughs> because I don't want them to run into me again because I don't want to. It's like me being arrogant and not wanting to learn the matchup and not wanting to change my game plan around them. But it's just like, yeah, like if someone like, was giving me trouble, like if another VTuber was giving me trouble, right? I'd be like, man, I don't know if I should be losing. But that's just my pride. So like. <laughs> Just letting go of that, I think, is gonna be really important for both, like me, my myself included, and like I guess like other, uh, I guess fighting game players who might become VTubers in the future. So yeah, <laughs> like oh. which, I'm actually curious about that question. Which, which uh, like old head, are you like thinking is gonna be a VTuber all of a sudden? I don't know. I just kind of threw that in just like as an example. Like I feel like an old head that might be a VTuber. There is a joke that Tav might be a VTuber. <laughs> uh, um, but um, just because he wanted to compete. But, like, I told him, I don't know if it's a good idea. <laughs> no, you know, honestly, you gotta let it rip. I feel like you just gotta tell him to be not, don't be mean, but, like, I don't know. It's just not that. I, I, I feel like, unless it's like skill or somebody or a blue god or actually not even blue it has to be somebody frankly who you know like knows that they're gonna like do something really messed up but mm. i can't keith, keith walks in vtuber avatar what? starts trash talking everyone <laughs> yeah just like yeah he like he like takes off his hat it's just like it and he's just like really mean. Then, but no, that's the thing. Like, no, none of the top players are mean. I, I right. I'm trying to think of somebody who's like a prime example of somebody who I would be worried of sub, like submarining the, like, or taking advantage of the format. That's a better way of saying it. Because like, I, I can't think of anybody off the top of my head. I guess okay. <laughs> I would laugh if Zeph did it. <laughs> <laughs> I would laugh. If it Zeph would be became really a funny. VTuber, I would actually laugh. So I'd be like, dude. This is Come it. on, it would be amazing. P it would be so fun. P content. It so, be, do you know like, who Zevakai is, by the way? Zevakai? Yeah. I do, I, I, I do know of them. I, I've, seen, I've seen them play, but I haven't, I haven't seen them yet. We haven't seen Are them crush okay? a watermelon between their thighs, and that's a damn shame. Wait, what? Wait, is that real? <laughs> I, I, I've yet to test this. I need to bring the watermelon to a local to an event that he's at, and then we'll see if the watermelon survives. Okay, well, let me know when you're there, because I'll be there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> now Zeth becomes a VTuber. That, that will be the day. I'm like, wow. <laughs> we, like, we really hit peak content. <laughs> I actually think that, well, I mean, we sort of seen it, like, jokingly. I mean, Omido did it, right? Omido mm -hmm. is a VTuber. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not really a VTuber in the sense that he's carrying on the more, like, production 
focus, like cute anime girl. Because like it, it's kind of ironic that somehow history has repeated itself once again, where like ladies have to put a lot more work into their everything <laughs> than just like random dudes do when even when it comes to VTubing. Because like it like it seems as if yeah, like if you're making a convincing female character, you have to be like a certain way. Whereas like straight up when you see a you see like an old head or anybody like a F ftc figurehead especially like vtubing it's just like the stock dog from <laughs> from like <laughs> a, what is that a face face rig or something right mm -hmm. they just get the slap on whatever they want i mean myself included right i, I just took the jankiest i i went to what, what was that called oh my gosh i forgot you know what the program is the the the, the really cheesy 3D one, and I just Vroid, yeah, Vroid, yeah, Vroid. I went to Vroid, slapped off some face paint like I'm a clown, and suddenly I'm Yoshimitsu, haha, <laughs> right? Like I didn't put any work into that in the sense that like you like in terms of like people would perceive it as heavy work. I just knew that it was kind of cute and a good use of my talents, but like at no point was I like, man, yeah. I gotta make this right. I gotta like put the care and attention into like my parents and all that. It's like no, this is looking janky on purpose. Like I have the I have the big shirt and the booze for no reason. Father <laughs> remote VTuber when that is a goddamn good question. I cannot wait for. That. I want Boom as VTuber. Actually, Boom would just be a Geo dude. That that's really easy. <laughs> rig a Geo dude. <laughs> we gotta rig a Geo dude. This is like what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> all right, everyone at Boom and just like Geo dude tuber when. <laughs> the, the irony is that like i think that the flippancy which we talk about this is very much rest sort of the answer to our question about like what is too much too little trash talk the answer is it only it depends exclusively on how confident you feel about talking trash right i, I, I don't think there's anybody any vtuber frankly at this particular stage that is in the fgc scene that would probably have enough clout to like unreasonably nuke somebody from morbid there is like if you're a smaller VTuber and you're worried about not having collabs with like people of your peers, okay, you're gonna be walking on eggshells for six trillion years. But if you're just there to screw around and have fun and then watch people come to you because you already have it figured out, eh, nothing to worry about. Uh, you could probably talk a lot as long as you don't cross any like lines that you wouldn't do in FGC. Because like I think like once you have to like settle it like outside of the game, okay, yeah, you better cut it out. Because it's mm -hmm. just not as fun, right? It's just like some dude being mad and they start talking on Twitter and it becomes like this dumb s sequence of, oh, I hope they have a first to 10, except they're not going to have the first to 10 because they hate each other. And they know that everybody knows that content is, you can't begrudgingly create content like that anymore. You used to because, oh, you want to play at this venue? Then you better settle that beef, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you want to be in this community, well, you better put up or shut up, right? We don't get that luxury anymore. It's a luxury too, because that's that is a sort of like, how should I say this? I had a customer come in yesterday who screamed at me because we carded him, and he was like, "This is America, you you can't card me." There's a certain like Wait. weird <laughs> insanity that comes with. Hey, I'm me. I'm landing the plane. It, it, there there is this, like this idealized way of we want to like have like I control everything. I control like all the infinity stones, right? And there's something primal about having that level of control. And some people love that, right? And I think in some ways the FGC has been a extension of that, like, man, we really just get to have like this like weird fight club, right? That's like it's almost like a cult. It's like a spiritual experience. And that like we, we can have all these rites of passage to establish whether or not they're allowed to stay or they have to go. And that used to, that's what, in some ways, like, I, the, the greatest allure of the old FGC is just like, man, that was cool. You could do that. You can't do that anymore. It's, it, it, we all know that, like, in the end, somebody's given up something if, like, they take the first of the 10. The people just kind of got smart. Granted, more cowardly, but they got smart. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, I think, like, if you come in with confidence, you kind of got to say what you want. Because, like, the FTC is not this fixed entity. It changes from game to game. You play Marvel, like, at Yipes' place, uh, you play in Marvel the way Yipes wants to play it, which is you're going to talk a lot of shit. You ain't going to back down unless you want to not be there anymore. But, you know, it, it changes from venue to venue. Like, if you come to Wednesday Night Fights, uh, like, at the actual venue, and... You don't like a matchup? 
you'll get like a little bit of like head pats from Kanmai, but then I'll be like, you're a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like I suck too. Shut up. I I'll like you know. It's just like it's just like that. And yeah, it's it, I think that what it comes down to is like you know FG, the VTubers by nature are collaborative, so a lot of the rules are made up on the spot. And right now the rules are very like like as far as like a face value, very sweet, saccharine, and cute, and adorable, and awesome. And it works for some things, but it might not work for the other things. Because you're right, like the fighting games are representative of this like raw primal, like almost like tribe mentality about like you know <laughs> I I am here by my own my own force of will and my 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 merits demand that I I demand respect and you will challenge me or you you will be excised from from our clan you know that kind of stuff mm. as is like yeah you can't really do that if your main if your main modus of operations is like well uh i'm adorable and you're adorable too <laughs> <laughs> unless we make it that way you, you never know you might be able, we might be able to make the yandere like fight gate, fight club and it'd be hella cool <laughs> ideas for the next person i guess <laughs> yonder a yonder a fighting gamer youtuber i'm pretty sure that person exists i'm just not sure who. oh you 2 k me once all right i'm gonna take your whole life like bro like yeah <laughs> <laughs> you don't love me unless you play me to a first to ten yeah oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> all right well um definitely um yeah, right now we are at the end of our podcast. Uh, I think before we really end it completely, I do uh, want to thank Komai and Serena for being here. Um, thank you for being a guest on the podcast, especially where I just started and are figuring things out. So we really want to yeah, thank you. And uh, before we do end, this is the part where you get to plug yourself for free. Um, yeah, so I guess we can start with Serena. Just free plug. Uh, well, yeah. Thanks again for having me on. It was a lot of fun. Much, much, much fighting games were talked about, and and the and the communities. Uh, yes. But yeah, in terms of plugs, uh, I am hosting a uh, VTuber tournament for Melzy Blood on Friday. So if you know anyone that's interested in playing, or that, wa that wants to enter or just want to enter yourself if you're a VTuber, uh, come check it out. Come check it out. We're, we are, we are going to be having some fun times. Winner, t winner, winner takes all. It's only just glory, but I'm just going to, I'll post a little, in the little thing. But yeah, that's, that's the only one I have right now. And also I might be making a 3D model in the future. Oh. So, so I will be experimenting on it with it later. A long last penguin opie. <laughs> <laughs> I did originally have a 3D model before, but I t turned 2D, and now we will try to make another 3D one. Oh. <laughs> Koma, you sound really excited there. <laughs> oh, listen. I, I, no. <laughs> don't, uh, I, I'm, just, I'm just saying it for the memes. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> My girlfriend's going to kill me. Holy shit. <laughs> All right. And, uh,. Yeah, for you, Komai, the plug? Ah, the plug. All right, well, uh, honestly, the plug is really for Super super Combo. I really think that SuperCombo.gg is really the place where I think Soul Calibur will finally get its footing back together. Uh, we sort of made a big mistake by becoming a Discord uh, centralized game in terms of knowledge. And uh, thank goodness we had kept a pod in us for so long. But yeah, it's... Uh, I want to branch out to other games, but I'm kind of a weirdo. I have a hard time building content. Uh, my upload's too bad, so that's why I just like writing stuff and it is immediately sending into the Aether. So, you know, shout out to Super Combo, uh, GG for providing us a space to actually have a wiki, but also just a place to just shoot the shoot the stuff and just talk and be fun and and like find commonality with other fighting game players because I know in Soul Calibur it's I know in myself I, I don't I, I don't really play other fighting games that much anymore. I play Melty a little bit. But I don't really, I'm not like the FGC guys I used to be. I'm definitely very much like, yo, if you don't know who Okubo is and how strong his abs are, you ain't my buddy. But I'm trying to fix that. That's a mental problem. Also, uh, right after this, actually, like almost like one and a half hours, 
Wednesday Night Fights, uh, Soul Calibur 6 on Big Papa Chunk. Uh, go give them all your love and, you know, hang out there. You're probably all here. Most of you guys are, you know, <laughs> regular, regular frequenters of said place. But if you are new, you're fresh, and you haven't seen the West Coast Soul Calibur that recently proved itself to being actually a play style, uh, yeah, we we run we we are the run as long the the long, longest running online local, like period. Uh, NLBC takes breaks. We kind of don't, <laughs> and it's kind of messed up. We're we're running ourselves ragged, but it's a it's a labor of love, and we don't we wouldn't be doing anything else if we didn't like the game. And oh boy, do we like the game! And uh, I guess last but not least, uh, I, I, I follow me at conmy five seventy three. I have a tweetar. And I occasionally post funny things. I'm going to be posting an inter hopefully an interest. Well, not hopefully. I will post an introspective and some funny, some pretty funny clips of like some of the pool stuff that we saw at NEC. Just to kind of, I don't know, try to convey some of the reasons why I'm kind of addicted to majors. They I hopefully can help kind of convey that. Because right now it's kind of funny how it's like not really that common anymore <laughs> since... uh. Rest in peace, thanks to COVID and all that fun stuff. But yeah, that's uh, my spiel. And uh, make sure you follow this fish dude and hang out in his lobbies because usually I'm too tired after commentary. Fish bully. <laughs> indeed, indeed. And once again, um, I guess like uh, a mini plug for me. I will be coaching James Chen tonight at around 10, 1030 ish. Uh, oh? He plays Keelix. So for those who don't know who James Chen is, he's a longtime commentary uh, figure as well. Um, he he do the key lick, so I'll be I'll be teaching him. Uh to tonight I pro I cannot be commentating for WNF because I have work in about some odd minutes, but <laughs> but yeah, that, that is what's going on with me. But once again, thank you all for coming to the podcast. I really appreciate you all showing up. Um and once again, thank you to my guests, Komai, as well as Serena Pinguina. Make sure you follow them on Twitter and Twitch and every single social they have. Um and yeah, I think uh yeah, that that's it. Um we will go let's go raid someone, I guess, so we could uh make sure we s share the love. So uh raid a VTuber though. Raid a VTuber? Okay, we will raid a VTuber. <laughs> Serena, do you have anyone in mind you want to raid? Raid Shadow Legends? All right. <laughs> well, well, hey, I, I I listen, if you get past the tutorial, your favorite streamer might get like a dollar. That is true. I uh, I, I did it for like... Blue. <laughs> Wait, Blue was what sponsored? About... Blue, no, Blue, Blue hit me up. He's like, yo, do me a favor. I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do anything for you, dude. And I did. And I'm not sure if I feel any better about it. <laughs> so, Kuti is playing Trials of Mana right now, I believe. I, I was going to say Kuti. Kuti? Yeah, right, let's, we will let's, Kuti. let's... Yeah. Kuti, Kuti. Let's, let's give it to her. She's local now for me, so one day we'll drag her out and we'll play offline one day whenever soul cow decides to revive itself from the cold dead corpse it's been for the last like i don't know year indeed <laughs> <laughs> all right the raid has started thank you all for coming once again appreciate all of you make sure you watch wnf and cootie's channel as well as serena and komai all right good night everyone good night night <laughs>